Shadow and I are on our way to do some astrophotography. And where we're at right now is a beautiful spot and about 4,500 feet above sea level. But as beautiful as it is and as clear as the skies are, we're just stopping for Shadow to take a little break. Where we're going tonight is upwards of 11,000 feet above sea level. It's a beautiful drive. We'll show you some of the scenery along the way. And once we get there and get set up, we'll talk more about the objects we're gonna go after and hopefully the wind and all the other things will cooperate and we'll capture some beautiful images tonight. pulled over at a lookout so that you can just see the altitude that we've gained here in the last oh, about 45 minutes of driving. To give you some perspective, Zions National Park is right straight ahead and where I live St. George is further to the right there and a lot lower. We've come a long ways elevation wise and we've got a little bit further yet to go. And right now there's no wind, and that's my biggest worry when I get up into these high elevations, is wind. And right now there's no wind, so let's keep our fingers crossed. Well, we made it to a nice meadow where I can set up and have minimal obstruction from the trees. And the wind is still very quiet. It typically comes from the west up here. So I'm going to set up camp and I'm going to set the telescope up on the other side of the rig. So if there is any wind, there's a very slight breeze right now, but it's coming from that direction. So the rig will help block what wind problems I may have, if any. And as far as elevation, let's check that out. Ten thousand three hundred and eighty feet. Ten thousand three hundred and eighty feet is high enough for me. We could have gone up a little higher, but it's getting dark, and the wind, you know, can pick up. Also, when it's higher, you do have more problems with the wind. So, I think we're pretty good with ten thousand three hundred and eighty feet. So, I'm going to take uh, about um, an hour here to set up camp and the telescope and everything. We'll set up a fire over there where there's a fire pit. People have camped here before. The fire will be on the opposite side of the rig. And then we'll uh, figure out which targets we're gonna go after because I have several in mind. But I think we have the whole universe for this time of year anyway. The whole universe to choose from. What do you think, little shadow? You just wanna look for little chipmunks and groundhogs and whatever else you can find. While I'm setting up, and before I forget, 
I'd like to give something back to the astrophotography community. And I really learn from a lot of the other YouTube channels like Kui of the Lazy Geek and Heavenly Backyard. There's so many of them. They're so far above me. Chuck's astrophotography. I learn from them. But I have one little tip. For those of you that go out and set up out in the uh, remote areas, my tip is motorcycle kickstand plates. Motorcycle kickstand plates. They keep the tripod from sinking into the dirt. If I have one tip, that's the tip I'm going to offer you. Those happen to be Harley Davidson, because I ride a Harley Davidson, but any motor stand, a motorcycle kickstand plate will work just great. Well, the sun is setting, the skies are absolutely perfect, and there's not even the slightest breeze right now. I mean, look at these skies. At this elevation, with no breeze, I mean, this is paradise. Really, before I forget, I wanted to show you the Bortle scale. This is reading a class two, a Bortle two. And that's because now that's not light pollution you see there, that's the setting sun. But, oh, as the crow flies probably 30 miles, you have a city called Cedar City. Not a big one, but big enough that it puts us into a, a, a Bortel II. Turn this light back on. But uh, that's very, very good. And we're gonna be pointing away from the light pollution anyway, because the Milky Way this time of year is right around there. So direction wise, we're pointing in the right direction. Bortle 2 is really fantastic anyway. And 11,000 feet above sea level, roughly that's really fantastic too. So, all right, I gotta get back at it. Well, we're staying warm here by the fire. It's about 11 p.m and already the temperatures dropped to 55 degrees. At this altitude, it'll get cold tonight, even in July. And we're on our target. And the target we picked, again, I just can't help it, is the Eagle Nebula, M16, where in the middle are these incredible pillars of creation made famous by the Hubble telescope in 2015. Now, why am I going after the Eagle Nebula yet again? Well, the main reason is it's very low on the horizon in the constellation Serpents. You can only capture it in the summer months, and July is the best month to capture it. And we're at the very end, tail end of July now, so it's my last chance this summer. And even though I've done it before, and I've even made a video uh, imaging it before, I just love the Eagle Nebula and the Pillars of Creation, and I want to do it better. And up this altitude, we ought to be able to do a pretty dang good job. So we're on the target. We're imaging it. Let me tell you a little bit about it. The Eagle Nebula is approximately 5,700 light years from Earth. As I mentioned, in the constellation Serpents, we're on the outer edge of one of the spirals of our galaxy, the Milky Way. So the telescope is pointed towards the center of the Milky Way. As you travel from Earth, towards the center of the Milky Way, 5,700 light years, then you come to the Eagle Nebula. Now the Eagle, Eagle Nebula is a, an enormous cloud of, of hydrogen and space dust and gases, and it's giving birth to new, hot, bright stars, thousands of them. And as these stars uh, are born, they emit tremendously powerful stellar winds. And those stellar winds kind of carve out a, a cavity gives it kind of a cave inside this giant nebula. The nebula itself is 50 light years by 70 light years in size. So this, this is a big star factory. And in the front of them are these incredible pillars of molecular space dust and gases. That There's three of them that themselves stretch about five to six light years in length. I mean, they're enormous. And those are the pillars of creation. 
and they're in front of the main star forming region that's in the center of the nebula and thus they're blocking the light so we see their silhouette and it's just incredible outlined by the the the, the light coming from behind now they too are forming stars they're so huge inside of them new stars are being born but they uh, are hiding them basically because they're so thick but hot new stars emit tremendously powerful stellar winds and as they those winds you know, blow out they will brush up against the surrounding nebula and they will eventually erode those pillars of creation away in fact when hubble first imaged the pillars of creation gave them the name the pillars of creation and made them famous uh, they have since eroded a little bit since then so what we're imaging now is just ever so slightly less <laughs> than what the hubble first imaged be that as it may they're enormous it's going to take probably millions of years for them to fully erode away so we we have time here we're, we're going to be able to enjoy the beautiful pillars of creation for quite some time now we're on the target we're taking 75 second exposures i want to get a couple of hours on it uh, we're going to go over there and just see how things are coming along and then we'll come back and stay warm by the fire come around here and there you can see the computer screen and there you have it we currently have 20 frames 20 stacked frames of uh, 75 second exposures and you can see the beautiful pillars of creation it, to me, it looks kind of like a, a baby dinosaur <laughs> hatching out of its egg. Everybody sees something different there. But that's what I see. But that's the Eagle Nebula here. The pillars of creation there. I mean, it's just absolutely spectacular. Now, you're looking at a GoPro camera imaging a a laptop monitor this is going to look much much better after i've properly processed this which i'll do tomorrow and we'll show it to you at the end of the video but for now let's just let it keep doing its thing we're going to just go stay warm by the fire because this is looking really good You see the little flowers, the little metal flowers. So my goal tonight is uh, to try to get some sleep. The problem is I get excited and I want to keep, you know, I want to keep awake and watching the image just get richer and richer on the screen. Now, believe it or not, I know I'm crazy. I have to work tomorrow. So I'm going to get up early, pack up. I'm an hour and 20 minutes from home. So if I can get home by 9 p. 9 a.m., uh, then I'll be fine. I plan to do that. So I'm not going to uh, get a lot of sleep tonight. But, you know, astrophotography, I mean, it is a, it's a technical, challenging hobby. But it is addicting. I mean, to be able to peer sometimes millions and, and hundreds of millions of light years into the cosmos. When we're looking at distant galaxies, I mean, I've gone as far as 300 million light years out. What's out there? There has to be life out there. I have no doubt about that. Trillions of galaxies, trillions, maybe infinite. The James W. Webb Telescope is definitely showing us that. And the average galaxy has anywhere from a, a 500 billion to a trillion stars. And many, many of those stars have exoplanets around them, just like our sun, which is a star. And it has Earth and all the planets that make up our solar system around it. There are uh, doubtless trillions others just like it. 
there has to be life. I have no doubt about that. But just the, the process of creation, how stars are born, how exoplanets come into existence, how galaxies are, are created, the distance and its immense magnitude of it all, it's just gripping, fascinating, unbelievable, incredible, awesome. Well, enough of that. At least you know why I stay up all night long doing something as crazy as this, but I love it. I hope you enjoy these images.